You know, this is the 50th anniversary of How to Succeed. What do you think is, is relevant about the show today? What do you think? The first of all, we live in times when big business is under a huge amount of scrutiny. It will be fun for people to see big business have the piss taken out of it. Mm -hmm. um, I, that's mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's, that's going to be funny. And also, you know, you've got with the advent of Facebook and especially last year, the film The Social Network, you know, Finch is kind of a period Mark Zuckerberg, yeah, um, yeah. who, you know, is a kid who realizes, it kind of comes to a realization that he's smarter than everybody else out there. Yeah. And he can, you know, and, and he won't let being a kid in any way inhibit him from right. attaining right. what he wants. As a, as a comment on, you know, the sexism in the mm -hmm. 50s, it's, mm -hmm. It's very, very clever, mm -hmm. um, and it's very funny, and I don't think stuff like that ever becomes irrelevant mm -hmm. or dated. The climbing the ladder, the succeed part, rules the sex part. Yes. There's a number that says a secretary is not a toy, and it's their mantra. Yes. Don't fool around. You're yeah. going to get fired if yeah. you fool around, even though they want to fool around. Well, that's my, my, I've always, because obviously, you know, I, I went and saw Promises, and at the same time, I was thinking a lot about how to succeed. And the, the key difference for me in, in terms of the two lead characters is that, uh, you know, Promises is about a guy who would never let his ambition get in the way of his morality and mm -hmm. Finch is someone who will never let his morality get in the way of his ambition. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. a kind of fundamental mm -hmm. opposite. Mm -hmm. What do you listen to? What's on your iPod? A guy called Edgar Jones Jones and he's this uh, Liverpudlian guy who uh, just kind of made, you know, I think it was, I think if the album's a few years old, I think it's like 2005 it came out and it's not like any other album that I've heard, certainly not within the last 10 years. It sounds like it could have been made anywhere between mm. 1920 and 1950. And I found this band called Cars Can Be Blue. It's proper punk music, not pop mm. punk, not anything else. It's really good and it's funny lyrically, mm -hmm. really That's clever fun. and just, yeah, just kind of proper punk music. Mm -hmm. I think they've got two albums out. Do you find it different experience performing in London and performing in New York? I think it's a different dynamic than, than it is in London. I, mean, I love working in London, it's my home, I love mm. being there and I love London audiences. Um, but is I, there a difference yeah. between going to the theatre and seeing a show? Is you, we just, yeah, yeah I, that's the there thing, might be. I don't there, know. There I mean, there's something yeah. about the idea of that kind of going out to see a Broadway show and also you know, you know there's some, some people here see, can see 30 to 40 shows a year. Yeah. That might be my lifetime total of shows between yeah, yeah. Sort, of, sort of 40 and 50 shows maybe. Yeah, yeah. You know, in London, people who go to the theatre mm -hmm. are very aware always of what's going on in the sure. theatre. Mm -hmm. But I don't know that the whole city is aware. I love both. I feel blessed yeah. to be able to work oh, at both. Yeah, absolutely. You know, what a blessing to be able to do, you know, how to succeed in business with you here at the Hirschfeld Theatre and also do Street Crime and Desire yeah. at the Donmar Theatre with Rachel Yes. Yeah. I mean, you know, what a blessing. I had a bizarre experience when I came over here to do Equus where I, in London, we had two producers, David Pugh and Dafford Rogers, and even though there were obviously lead producers on mm -hmm. Equus, then I met kind of 40 people. You mean all those people that go up to get the Tony? Like, <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. All those people, yeah. It's an interesting one. What was your first theatre viewing experience? Aladdin in Panto at the Salisbury Theatre. I turned around to my mum and said, I want to be an actor, and she said, no, you don't. And then the conversation yeah. kind of ended, ended. there I for see. five years. One of my earliest really delighted memories mm -hmm. in the theatre was seeing um, Midsummer Night's Dream, I think mm -hmm. at the Comedy Theatre, mm -hmm. directed by Ed Hall. What was your first theatrical performance? I never really did any school, this was the only school play I ever did, it was a production of Nelly the Elephant and I was uh, about six and I was playing one of the, maybe younger actually, and I was one of the monkeys in the background. I have the videotape right now. Oh good, fantastic. <laughs> um, um, and so yeah, and then my first, you know, and then before I did Equus, um, Ken Branner, who was in the second Potter film, he got me in to do the play what I wrote with uh, Sean Foley and Hamish McCall oh, in Hamish London. Yeah, yeah. And I did that, yeah. I think I did that three times and came away going, that is amazing. Yeah. I, I, I definitely have to do that again. Yeah. <laughs>